It's your boy Jason Barton, educator, here today to give you a demonstration and tutorial on the most basic and effective fade system for ball fade using the wall cordless magic clips and the Andy Slimline Pro Li cordless. These are the most basic but most effective professional the most professional basic professional tools and I recommend for any beginner that wants to be cordless. So let's just get right into it. Alright guys here we go. These are the guards that we're gonna start with. These are wild guards. There's your half guard, your number one guard, you got your one and a half guard, and we have our two and our three. We may not even use the three but these are the two you'll need. You want to start out by combing the hair, especially when there's over curly hair, African American hair. You definitely want to comb it because it curls up. You, know, you, you want to you want to comb it before you start and as you go. Always comb it in, di in direction of the natural growth. And the oil clippers. You want to start by bottling them out with your wall closed. Lever out completely closed. You get some of that oil off of there. I'm going to do more of a uh, regular fade, kind of medium drop toward the back. I sped, I sped the video up a little bit uh, in, in certain areas for the, so we can save time. want to take whatever you like to ball out with you can use your magic clips if you got them uh, zero gap or close uh, tie, uh, close to zero gap, gap at least you don't want to zero gap too tight where you're cutting people here I've got my trimmers when you bought an out African American you have to be sure uh, that they won't bump up if you use your shaver so sometimes they cut so close with just the trimmer they won't even need the shaver to look clean on, on, on black people's hair. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to have my blade open. I'm going to create my first panel. So I got the lever all the way open with the long extent for the blade. And I'm going to create my first finger width panel. Depending on how much space you got to work with, deciding on which finger you use or how wide that panel is going to be. The reason why we say finger width because we just need some type of reference because it could say inch, it could say half inch, but people just uh, don't know what an inch is. A lot of times, some people want inches to one person may not be an inch to another person. So it's easier just for them to use their finger as a reference because they always got their finger with them, but they don't always have a ruler with them. Set that panel in nice and clean, and then you're gonna start fading the panel down by moving the lever halfway. So it's halfway closed now. We're gonna go in and we're gonna we're gonna cut and we're gonna stop the blade, the cutting blade, just slightly below where you stopped it previously when you had it open. So now that we got it halfway, we're going up and we're gonna break it down some, and you're fading it, you're fading it down. Now we're gonna move the lever over one to quarter. That's one notch from close. So we're now it's on a quarter, that's close, and that's a quarter. So we're gonna do it on a quarter and we're gonna go right back in. We're gonna keep fading it, fading it down. And we're gonna stop the cutting blade right below where we previously stopped. So as you go up to the same spot or up higher, you're gonna create a, uh, you're gonna knock a, a light spot or a plug. In your fade, then that's gonna double work you. So you just want to just slightly drop. It's just like a, a millimeter or a hairs, a couple hairs below where you previously went. And I'm just going. I'm, I'm not gonna do the whole head. I'm just gonna stop halfway in the back. I'm gonna do for the sake of time one side. 
Okay, now I'm closing all the way to work on that bottom line, getting that bottom line out. So we're going to attack that bottom line. Some people actually cut like this. They cut one half at a time, and one half of the head at a time, then they cut the other half. I like to go all the way around. If I'm working on one, if I got my blade set on one setting, my lever, I'm going to go all the way around on that panel, right around the head with it before I make an adjustment. I like to just, that way I, I feel like the fade comes out more consistent. For me it does, if I just cut the whole head at the same time. But of course after this video, I gotta go back and cut the side of his head. and make it match up. So work that bottom line out of there. Now next thing we wanna do, we wanna grab our one guard. I use the color-coded guards, because for me, it uh, helps me move faster when I'm fading. Cause I can just grab my next guard because I got the I got the colors memorized. You all your guards are the same color. When it once the sizes start getting close to each other, you can make mistakes grabbing the wrong guard, or you have to look at them closely. Especially for beginners, you gotta look at them closely and make sure it's the right guard. So we're gonna create another finger width panel. We, we created the first panel and faded it out. Now we're gonna create a second panel here with number one guard open, with the lever open, and we're gonna create a second finger width panel. And uh, once we create that panel in with the one guard open, then we're going to go back and fade it out like we did the first panel. So I'm just showing in the back. I got a, I got the panel a little bit wider because I dropped it down. The reason I did that because the swirls in the back, it depends on where the swirl sits in the back of the person's head because it can look like it's kind of too high if you fade in the swirl. And I just wanted to get below the swirl in the back. Okay, so I went from straight from open to close, from one, with the one open to, one, to the one closed. I didn't go half and quarter like I did previously. Once you get up to the one guard, you can go open, you can go, you don't have to go quarters inches move you don't have to move quarter from quarter you can move straight from open to close or straight from half to close because you'll learn that the eye cannot detect the difference between one quarter movement once once you're in a longer lens but anything below a one it's important to move just a quarter at a time because your eye can get, can detect the smallest differentiation in length once you get below a one all right, I dropped my guard. I gotta sanitize it. For all you sanitation freaks, they'd be all, they'd be all in the comments. So you, it's a half guard, it's a blending guard. So you're gonna start with it halfway. You're not gonna start with it open. You're gonna go straight to half with your blending guard. If it has half in its name, you go straight, you start with it on halfway. Cause the half and the one and a half are what's called blending guards. So you can start with them on half to go in right behind the one close. Shout out to uh, Chris Bazio for teaching me that in one of his classes. That was game. Because before that, I would just go wall guards, open, half, close on everything in my fade. It came out good, but this saved me some um, steps. That's how I put that. I say this is like one of the best systems out there for fading. It's the ultimate fade system for beginners to me. Now we're going from half straight to close. I'm, you know, no quarter, my bad. We're going from half to quarter because it's below a one. So we're going from half to quarter. And you're just going to drop down just slightly, like I said. Maybe a millimeter or so below where you where you was fading at at the previous setting. I'm going in and I'm just running that guard in. And remember, your curly hair you got to rub it, rub up against there to make sure that that is feeding the hair to the blade. Now we're gonna go from quarter. To close. Alright, I'm gonna go back in 
and we're going to drop down slightly below where we previously were going up to. We're not going to go up as high as we previously did because we don't want to knock a spot in our fade. As you can see, it's coming together. The blend is coming together as we go. So let's yeah, recap what we did. We put a finger whip panel in with the blade open, faded it out. Then we put a, a second finger whip panel in with the number one with the lever open. And we're fading it out as we speak. So with that lever closed, that should have got it pretty much faded out. So now we're not going to do one and a half. That's the one and a half. We're going to go ahead and go straight to the two. There we go. Now we got it right. Go straight to a two. We're going to knock a lot of that bulk down. Now this is this is the third panel. It's the third panel, but sometimes it's hard to see that it's actual panel. If you're going in, see you're lightening all that up. That's your third panel. We put the first panel in, fade it out. Put the second panel in, fade it out. Now you take that two, and you put the third panel in. Sometimes you can do it with two, start with the two closed, because the hair may not be long enough. But if the hair is long enough, you can start with it open. As you can see, we're breaking the hair down. So it's creating another panel, and it's going to have to be faded out too. So basically, that's a three finger fade. You got three finger width panels right there that were setting in and had to be faded out. And right here, I'm going with the grain because I got to keep the way I got to keep length in that area so it can make a smooth transition to the length at the top. Now, I got the one and a half on halfway because I'm fading that, that third panel out. We started with a two, now we're putting the one and a half. I started with it on halfway. Remember, if it got half in its name, you start with it on halfway. The one and a half halfway can come right behind the two clothes and start blending it out. Now I'm going straight to clothes. One and a half clothes. And I'm still, I'm dropping down right below where I went. I'm not going to go up as high as I went previously when I had the one and a half halfway. I got the one and a half clothes, so I'm not going to go up as high. But I'm going in there and I'm breaking it down. I'm lightening it up. Once again, with curly hair, sometimes you gotta go with the grain just to uh, blend stuff down. Because the hair likes to roll up and, and bulk up. All right now, it's time for detail work. We went through the whole system. Now, it's time for detail work. And, uh, so, we're back to our one open because that's what can take any weight that was left out, that was left in there from the one and a half clothes. The one open comes right behind the one and a half closed when you're fading down. So what we're doing here, you're going in, you're going straight, you knock down any bulk or your weight line you see, and in, in, the, um, in the detail work, you, we do open half closed with this system. Open half closed. Everything is open half closed in the detail work. That was open. Now that's the one, the one halfway. Every guard open half closed in detail work. So we already ran through the whole system. Now we do we doing detail work by doing everything from a one down open half closed. You can use the corners of your um, blade or your guard during detail work when necessary. See how I'm using just the corners in some spots where you feel like you need to go up a little bit higher with a thick spot. You just turn it on the corner, like one or two teeth, or making contact with the head. And I see weight, so I'm going to go with the grain and smooth something down. That's all uh, detail work here. As you can see, our first run through the fade system, it faded to her acceptable now you put your detail work in that's what sets you apart that's what that's what push, that's what takes you puts you at another level and again curly hair requires sometimes 
go with the grain and smooth things down. So I did that open and close. And that's only as you see necessary. All detail work is as you see necessary. The rule of thumb is open half close on everything one and below. However, sometimes you just may want to move it a quarter because you're doing detail work. Everything goes on detail work. There's no real rules, but you need to have a system. You got people that go in with the, with the points of their shears and point cut certain things, get certain weight or spots out and doing detail work. So that's open now, that's half. Just going in, working on any type of areas that look like it may be some darkness or where the, where the blend can be even smoother or more pristine. Oh, look at that blend come together. Y'all probably don't even remember what we started with, the canvas. That's all right, it'll show you at the end on the other side and remind you what kind of canvas we actually started with. Ooh, that boy gonna be icy. Y'all messing with a master barber right here. Teaching the basics though. Basic instruction, putting out fire blend that's closed open half closed I mean we could have skipped the uh, detail work a long time ago it would have been an acceptable fade when we, ran through, when we first ran through the system for the average haircut bar for the average barbershop With the grain here to kind of smooth down where the hair is curling up. Create little voluminous spots. And you gotta train your eye for details. Some people are probably watching this video wondering why what am I doing? Why am I still going in? The fade is finished, you know. But you keep cutting and, and you you get with a, you get on the master barber and they'll start Try, help you train your eye for detail. A lot of times when I train guys, they can't see, you know, the lines and weight in the fade. They think they're done with the haircut, and I tell them go back in there. And it's amazing to me how they can never see it when they are the one to cut the hair. But I can actually act the same person. Hey, go look at the head over there and tell me if anything wrong with that head that somebody else cut. They can always walk right over there and point out. Any weight line or anything or any mistake on a, on a person's head that somebody else cut, but they can't never notice it when they cut the, <laughs> when they cut the hair. So that was open. Now here's halfway with the blade. So basically, you you just fade all the way back down from a one down, one and a half and blade. Fade down from one down, doing open half close on everything in your detail work. Shout out to my daughter for uh, being a good camera person, getting these good angles. So I close the blade. I'm just trying to get, get down low at the bottom line, get the hairs and spots that need to be blended out. So guys, of course, I could have done the whole head in the same time that I'm doing this tutorial. I, you know, I do it every day at the barbershop, but definitely want to just put the work in to show you guys the process. And I re uh, this video is, I'm doing this video, and I'm, I'm gonna use this video to train a lot of barbers that I train. And I like to just tell them, hey, go watch the video and cut ahead while, while, you, while you're watching the video. I'll let this video walk you through your haircut. And I, and I think it'll be very effective. 
It's just like I'm right there with you. For you guys who are watching this on YouTube, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. You guys got to remember to hit the like button because that's how the alg algorithms work, guys. Y'all got to hit the like button. I see a lot of people watch my videos because it tells you how many views you have, but then the likes and dislikes buttons are, are very few. The people will watch and they just, just don't hit the button. You got to hit that button to show that uh, you're interacting. Yes, I just rethink that if that's all you ask. If you can get free content that's helping you, you know, improve your game or knowledge or whatever, the least you can do, all the person asks you for is to hit the like button to help them out as well. I just think that's only fair. That's any that's any time you getting something out of any video on YouTube. In detail work, you can just see, see anything, go back in. And another thing, guys, I think I teach my students and my trainees. If you um, edge, edge up somebody up, it, it, you, you will be able to see things that pop out in your fade that you can go back and hit. These are Slim 9 Pros with a special blade on them. So don't expect your don't expect your slim to hit that hard. <laughs> I hurt you. Now for real though, guys, I paid a hundred dollars for that blade. Just for the blade. But the trimmers did kind of down me when I was doing another half, and I don't know why. I gotta find that out later because. Uh, it been sitting on the charger forever in my house. That's at my home station. I don't know why. Well, y'all like that candy paint on them on the magic clips? Woo -hoo -hoo. Don't hate. Congratulate. So there it is, guys. Just kind of fade in there and kind of set it in. Just do a little detail work and go in just from that. But uh, once again, like and, su and subscribe. If you guys ever want me one-on-one one -on -one training, hit me up at barberbuilders.net. Uh, email info at barberbuilders.net. Website barberbuilders.net. Like and share.